We just got more control over data labels in the August 22 version of Power BI, where we can control the color of each individual data label with the new updated conditional formatting. Let me show you how it works and how to get the most out of it. Let's get started. Welcome to How to Power BI, my name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Let's talk about the most recent update to the conditional formatting of data labels. So before the August 22 version, there was also conditional formatting for the color of data labels. However, that color would be applied to all of the data labels. So it was considering the conditional formatting rule for the aggregate of a field across the entire visual instead of for each data point. And this now changed. So now we can apply different colors for individual data labels. So let's see how this works and how to get the most out of it with a little trick. Now let's take this chart over here as a starting point where we are showing the actual sales in blue versus the forecast in gray. And we would like to add data labels that are showing in green when the actual sales are above the forecast and red when the actual sales are below the forecast. Now, let's see how this works. Now let's go to the formatting panel and add some data labels over here. And then we can open the data labels formatting options. And then from here, we can apply the data label to either all series or individual series. Now, you see at the moment, it's just a mess. So I only want to show the data labels for the actual sales line. Okay, so let's go over here to the forecast line. And then for that one, I'm going to turn it off. And then for the actual sales, I make sure it's on. So now the interesting part, if we go a little bit further down and open here the values group, then here we have the option to apply a different color. Now for that, we can use conditional formatting. And this is the part that changed. Now let's write a measure that checks if the actual sales is above the forecast, then apply green, otherwise red. Okay, now let's insert then this new measure. And I'm going to call this one conditional formatting for my labels. And for this measure, we can use a switch function. Okay, now the switch function starts with the expression. Now here we can type in true, and then we can check our conditions. Now we want to compare the actual sales. So let's look for my actual sales measure. And we want to see if this one is bigger than or equal to our forecast. Now for that one, we also have a measure. And if it is, then I would like to apply a green color. So I just type in the color green. Then for the second condition, we can check if the sales actual is below the sales forecast. Now, if it is, then I want to apply the color red. All right, now let's close here the switch function, press enter, and let's use it for conditional formatting of the color of our data labels. So we go back to our formatting panel, click on the FX button, and then here under format style, we go for field value, and then we can choose that measure that we just created. Click OK, and it works, which is already amazing because before it was possible with some weird workaround, which took a lot of effort, but now it's much easier. Okay, but I think we can still do a little bit better because at the moment, I think it's a little bit much to show all of the labels, I still don't really know what to focus on. Maybe we only want to focus on those parts where the difference between the actual sales and the forecast is above a certain threshold. Okay, now how can we adjust the measure to make that work? Okay, now let's go back. Now let's update this measure and incorporate a threshold. And whenever the difference between the actual and the forecasted value is bigger than the threshold, then we want to show the label. And otherwise, we don't want to show the label. Okay, now let's first start with adding here a variable that holds the value of the threshold so that we can easily change it later on. Okay, so let's say the threshold needs to be 75,000. Then over here, we can also create a variable for the result. And now we can update our logic a little bit. Now, what we want to do, first of all, we want to check the difference between the actual sales and the forecasted sales. And then we want to check if this is bigger than or equal to the threshold value. And if it is, then we turn green. And otherwise, well, otherwise we just have to copy this over to the second line here for the switch function. 
And then we want to check if this is below or equal to, and then we can put in a minus sign and refer again to the threshold variable. Now, of course, for some of the data labels, neither of these conditions will hold because the values might be, well, below the threshold. Now, if that is the case, for now, I just want to return the color black. All right, so let's type in black. And because we're using variables, we want to have a return statement and then return the result. Now, let's see if this works. Now, you see, we have a red data label over here and we have some green ones there, there and there. And all of the other ones, they are black. Okay, but I don't want them to be black. I want them to disappear. And for that, I have a little trick. Now let's go back again to a measure. Now here, instead of returning black, we can make use of a different color model, which is the RGB A color model, which lets us also apply transparency. Okay, now, so let's replace this part, keep the quotation marks, and then type in RGB A. Now to get black, you just type in 0, 0, 0. So how much red green and blue you would like to have. Now, if we want it to show, then we can type in a one for the opacity and then close the bracket for RGBA. You still need a quotation mark there at the end and press enter. Now you will see at this point, everything still looks the same. But now we're going to change that last argument over there and we're going to make it zero. Press enter again. And now all of the data labels that were below the threshold, so that were in black, now disappeared. So we have exactly that what we were looking for. So now to make the data labels just a little bit prettier, I'm going to go back to my measure. Instead of returning here the standard color green and red, I'm going to use the RGBA code to come up with a prettier green and red color. Now I already have those, so I'm going to quickly copy them over. So that is done. Let's then also go to the formatting options again. And here for the data labels, I'm going to make the values bold so that we can read them a little bit better. Now, maybe for readability, you also want to apply a background. So if we open here the background options and turn them on, well then, ah, here the method fails because you see, we have a background color also for the ones that have the transparency set to 100%. And here for the background color, there, hmm, we don't have a conditional formatting button just yet. So I hope that they are going to add the conditional formatting button there of course, as well. Now, in addition to a background color, you might also want to add markers. However, here we have the same problem that we cannot determine the color with conditional formatting just yet. Now, what else can we do to make this feature shine even more? Well, we could, instead of hard coding the threshold value, we could make that dynamic so that the end user can choose what the threshold value is. And we can do that with parameters. So let's go here to modeling and then choose over here new parameter numeric and here we can rename it to threshold and we want to have data type whole number minimum zero maximum let's say we want to have a um, hundred thousand like this increments of five thousand and then here the default value let's put that to seventy five thousand add the slicer to the page let's create it now you see that my visual broke and that is because over here in my measure, I have the same name threshold, which I cannot use now anymore. So let's rename this maybe with an underscore right in front of it. And to be consistent, I also do that over here and put some underscores there. And then you will never have that problem. Okay. So the visual is fixed and we have now here on the right hand side, a new table for our parameter. And there's also measure threshold value. Now, and this is the value that the end user selects in the parameter. Now let me take that slicer and let me put it over here at the top and let's set the value again to 75,000. And now we go back to a measure and let's update it so that instead of hard coding that value over there, we can refer to the measure threshold value. And that's already it. Now, if you go back to the visual, change the value for the threshold, let's say to 50,000, you see, all of the labels where the difference is bigger than 50,000 show up. And then as the last finishing touch, maybe you also want to have a target area that you add to the forecast line, which is very easy to do. You just take over here the visual, go to analytics, and then here we can add arrow bars. And we want to add them to the forecast. And then over here we can turn them on and we want to have it by field. Now, and then you, take here the threshold value 
and you use that for the upper bound. And we want to have over here relative to the forecast measure. Now you see that gives us these little bars that go up, but we want to have also one that goes down. So let's say here, make symmetrical. And then instead of the bar, we would like to have the arrow band. Okay, so bar off, arrow band on. And if you want to change the formatting further, here you have all of the formatting options. All right, and that's it. Now we have the chart that we were looking for with dynamic labels. And if we change here the threshold, let's say to zero, we see all of the labels. If we set it over here to the maximum of 100,000, we only see that one over there. And over here, 80,000 or 75,000, then we see just a few. So that you exactly know where the important points are that you need to focus on. So this is how you can get the most out of the updated conditional formatting feature for data labels. And let me know what you think about the new updated conditional formatting for data labels. And if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos about labels, then check out these videos over here. And I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Shh.